In this tutorial, we are going to look at how to create character concept art. Like all concept artwork, it is vital to have character storyline and photograph references. These will help you speed up your workflow and produce a more tangible result, which is essential for game characters. If you don't have an idea of who your character is yet, then get back to your sketchbook before you watch this tutorial. Ok, so for my character concept, I'm going to create a barbarian from the Stone Age called Bar Brian. I've already created his partner, Barbara, using the same workflow I'm about to show you in this video. So as you can see, I have gathered some reference images and appointed them to their own layers. Some of these images are not representing the clothing or weaponry that my character will be wearing. I am therefore using separate references to give me an idea of how these will look. Finally, you'll notice that I have duplicated and mirrored some of these images. I find this helps me to uncover any faults during the painting process. The first stage of artwork is to create a basic gesture sketch of how I want the character to be posed. I'm going to hide all of my images except for my full body references. I now create some basic guidelines between the two images to help me accurately gauge where each section of the body needs to go. Remember, the whole point of concept artwork is to create something new and unique, not just to trace over an already existing image and effectively reinvent the wheel. Now that I have these guidelines in place, I start to create a basic head shape. I'm not looking for complete accuracy at the moment. This line work is very much just scribbles, and you shouldn't waste too much time here. Try to keep your pen moving, and use simple shapes to get some imagery down. I like to quickly correct my proportions with the lasso tool to complete the sketch. After checking over my proportions, I make the layer semi-transparent and create a new layer on top. This will be the layer where most of my work is completed. I'm using this photo reference because of the character's bulky brow ridges and strong jawline. I plan to combine this face with a tribal hairstyle to match my concept brief. I'm now creating some tones with a standard brush. I like to keep my opacity high and my flow low when I'm doing this for the skin. The head shape isn't quite right yet, but I can correct that as I go along. It is important to stand away from your work and try not to fiddle on one aspect for too long. I create the hair in clumps at first with a similar workflow to the skin. I will go over them later on using a bristle brush. This is also a good stage to flip your work horizontally and check for any bad proportions and inconsistencies. I continue to complete the rest of the body using a similar process I did on the head. I'm constantly flipping between references to get the desired result. It is worth noting that the closer your references are to the same pose, the easier they will be to visually composite. There will come a point in your concept painting where you will have to rely on a degree of imagination, but you should aim to keep this minimal as possible in terms of visual accuracy and believability. When creating lighting in concept art, it is important to understand that each reference photo you use will always be at least slightly different. I like to try and stick to the lighting that I find on my face references, as human beings, we generally pay most of our attention to people's faces before anything else. Another common mistake with lighting is to try and make every section of the painting an extreme dark or an extreme light. These levels of contrast are best used sparingly on more significant parts and sharp angles in the form. Whilst you are painting, you should zoom out often and never be afraid of altering the direction and proportions of your work. One of the benefits of working on one layer is that we can easily select, stretch and drag out parts of the painting without worrying about any of the other content underneath. I'm now attempting some hair strands using a bristle brush with a low flow and moderate opacity setting. It is still important to use big and confident strokes to get the most desired effect. When creating any hair, I like to create the strands that are farthest away from the root first. This way, I'm naturally layering the strands that are closer to the root on top. This helps to give a more realistic effect to my work. To match my female character concept, I'm going to give this male character some arm braces and some similar aesthetics to his loincloth. Most of this is done by feel and imagination, but it is advisable to do your research of what resources would or could be available to your character before attempting this stage. I'm also using the same knowledge to apply the work to the boots and getting some basic tones down on the legs whilst I'm in that area. Now that the body is nearing completion, I start to add in the weaponry. 
Depending on the object that your character is holding, it could be advisable to include items like these in your initial gesture sketches. The weight of an object will realistically influence the way a character poses. When painting static objects like these, I prefer to use hard brushes and work from back to front. I use small but confident divots in my strokes to quickly mimic the texture of the atlatl. I use a similar technique for the darts. However, when painting long parallel objects, I prefer to paint them vertically or horizontally using the shift key first. This allows me to get perfectly straight strokes. So now I'm going to place the darts on a layer underneath the hands. I'm then going to erase the parts where necessary and repaint the fingers wrapping around them. We're now at a stage where we can start adding the finishing detail along with a background. I prefer to open a fresh Photoshop document for this part at a relatively high resolution. I can scale my work up slightly. This won't matter much because I'm going over it anyway. I've brought in my weapons on separate layers too. There will almost always be gaps from where the last background was. I fix this by simply creating a layer underneath and painting the same colour into where the gaps are. Once this is finished, I merge back down so that I again have the convenience of working on just one layer. I create the background using a soft brush with low opacity and flow. I like to use opposite colours on the colour wheel to create a simple background. I can perhaps add mist over the dark areas to add some more emotion to the scene. Ideally, you would paint an environment for your character to inhabit, but that is for another video. From here on out, it is very much a case of adding in extra detail and highlights where you see fit. Try to be selective, and not just throw sharp highlights everywhere, as this will kill the depth in your work. Constantly take breaks and look at your work with fresh eyes. Continue with the methods that I've taught you in this video until you reach a result that you are happy with. Well, this character concept art piece is now complete. Meet Barb Ryan.